Hi everybody, this is Tom Trimingham, Screen Printing Artist, ScreenPrintingArtist.com. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube if you haven't, and uh, check out the website. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to quickly, actually two different ways, how to quickly remove a background from a photo in CorelDRAW. Now you normally you don't think of CorelDRAW as a photo editing software, but there are a lot of times where it, it's helpful to know how to manage photos inside of CorelDRAW. So I'm going to go ahead and add a page here and I'm going to dive right in. Now when you want to import a photo you can just control I and I'm going to try to go at just an average speed here. I'm a little bit of a spaz so I'll try not to uh, try not to go too fast. I'm going to just go ahead and pull in this photo right here. I'm going to go ahead and say import. This is a photo I got off of uh, my uh, subscription on freepick.com. They have a lot of nice uh, clip art and photos and stuff in there for your for you to check out. Now, what I'm going to do here is I want this t-shirt, right? So what I want is I'm going to use this t-shirt, but I don't want the model, right? So there's a couple of different ways of getting that. Now, a couple of things. You notice the hand is kind of blocking the corner here, and it's a little more wrinkly on this side. I kind of like this side. So I'm just going to use this half of the t-shirt. Now, this is the first way that I typically will get a graphic in in CorelDRAW. I'm going to go ahead and go to the freehand tool. I'm going to click that. I'm going to zoom in pretty good, but I'm going to try as rapidly as I can now to cut out this t-shirt. And I'm just going to double click and you'll hear you'll hear the mouse double clicking relatively quickly. And you notice I'm trying to stay out of the area where the skin um, would show a white like slice. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to go just a little bit past the center here. I'm going to go to about there. And I'll just pull up. I hold the um, control key and I can go down a little bit. I'm going to come up to this corner, hold the control key so I can add to it. And then just go and then double click. And I'm going to go down the outside here. And I'm going to try not to make too many nodes. But I'll try to keep it relatively straight. I can kind of straighten it out a little bit and see if you move along the edge. I can leave some of the wrinkles, but I'm going to try to smooth things out a little bit. I'll leave a little bump for the seam because that'll look a little more natural. And then with the curves, you just kind of try to... And I'm not being careful, like if you were using the bezer tool, some people love to use the bezer tool, you could have done this with the bezer tool too, about this speed, and, and you would have, you know, curves that would kind of map to this. You could do that as well. I'm a little bit... Uh, impatient so especially if I have long I like it because doing it this way because I find it to be just a tiny bit faster for me and again personal preference you know a lot of people love the bezer tool or the um, some of the some of the other ways of making paths but uh, this way I'm just double clicking here just trying to hug the curves a little bit you notice I'm I'm not being uber careful but I'm I am trying to stay inside of the black area, if you can see that. And I could, as we were saying, kind of, uh, you know, smooth it out a little bit. You see, I'm keep, kind of keeping it straighter here, just to give us a little bit more of a smoother looking finished shirt near the end here. the middle and you can kind of see see where that handle is that's where the other side is so I'm going to double click here hold the control key and go up and now I'm going to zoom back out I'm going to look at this now see here and I can just go ahead and connect these two and I, if you want if you're having trouble seeing it you can always turn it to a different color all I did was right click on orange there just so I could see it I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm still on the freehand tool. And see where it becomes an arrow here when I go over it? Arrow. I can click there and it'll it'll automatically lock to that and it'll lock to that. Now what I want to do, I'm going to just make sure this is a solid shape. It is. I undid it. So I did it. I filled it with orange and then I control Z undid it. Now I'm going to, I'm going to pick a center line, which I think would be right about here for the center of the shirt. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim this along that center line. Again, I'll I'll make it yellow for my center line. So I created a box that's a little bit bigger on the top and bottom than this. 
and then I'm just gonna I'm gonna nudge it over till I think it's right about the center line of where I want the center of the shirt to be and then I'll go over twice just go one two this way so I'm leaving a little bit more to this shape that way when I when I do what I'm gonna do there'll be a little bit more um, to use so I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna hit delete and now you see I have this center point now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this I'm gonna click this object object power clip place click frame and I'll put it inside here now I've got it inside this now what I can do now is I'm gonna go up here make sure my duplicates and clones are set to zero I'm gonna save the file I already have a name in there so I just left it as K9 but you'll see how that comes in later and I'm gonna duplicate this so control D and then I hold the control key and then I flip it and then you can see oh there's that line there so I select both and then I deselect now you see how there's a thin line that's why I left it a little bit longer because now you can nudge it once and maybe twice and then you get a very nice symmetrical uh, t-shirt and then I'm gonna save this and it also doesn't have a background because uh, so you can place it on other objects and that sort of thing and I'll show you how that works later now a bunch of you are probably saying well what the heck I don't want the neck to look like this the neck looks kind of weird so how do we fix that well it's actually pretty easy to fix what I'm gonna do is take this shirt here and I'm gonna duplicate it so I'm gonna take these two I'm gonna duplicate them control D and then I'm gonna convert them into a bitmap I'll just leave it because they're RGB. I'll leave them as RGBs, 300 DPI. I'll make sure the transparent, the background's transparent because I don't want it to become a big white square. And then I then I merge them together. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go behind, shift page down, and then I'm going to nudge this up. And you're going to notice it's going to get about to there, near the top. That's about right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to crush this down. A little flatter. Let's see how that looks. Just so the arc is a little bit less. Let's go ahead and go up. I'm not you holding the shift key and the nudge tool to nudge it up a little quicker. Let's just see how this looks. That isn't too bad. Like right about there. And then I just need this shape in here. So what I'm going to do? This bitmap right here. I am going to just create myself a little shape right here. So I'm just going to go here. And I just have to be past the edges of this shirt right here. Make a com combination. Then I can select that bitmap I just made. And in this case, I'm actually going to make this bitmap just a little bit darker. You can see it's an RGB, so I'm going to FX um, adjust tone curve. And I'm just going to let's reset that so it doesn't get too crazy and then let's just darken it up because it's inside of the inside the shirt so it's gonna be just a hair darker just a little bit let's say okay and then we will take this effect and we'll go object power clip place inside frame and here you put it inside the frame and then shift page down and then no outline. And then if this want you wanted that to be more rounded, you could always just double click this, make it round. Whoops. And then all these shapes are round now. So what I can do is I can just go here and I can just curve this and then it looks rounded. Same thing here. Bring it down a little bit and then curve it. So it looks like it's rounded. And now you've just created a back to your shirt, essentially. So I can save this. And again, the nice thing here is this is all just like these three objects here, right? Um, and so you're ready to actually use this, or I could make the whole thing into, I'll make it a little larger here. I could make the whole thing into a transparent bitmap if I wanted to. If I didn't want the versatility of changing things, I could just keep everything the same here. I'll save the file. Um, and then I'll go ahead and duplicate it. Um, Control D, and then I'll convert that bitmap. Uh, convert to bitmap transparent background just leave it I say okay and see now all these pieces um, I can leave off we can just use this one 
which has a transparent background on it. And you'll see that because I'm, I can throw a throw background right here on the image so you can just see. You go behind it, and there's there's your background right there. So you made your t-shirt. Now i got to put some on the t-shirt. So I'm going to show the second way. Let's add a page here. I right click and then say insert a page after. I'm going to show the second way to kind of cut a background out of an image. In Corel, I'm going to go ahead and go import. Let's go ahead and find this photo right here. That's a, that's a fun looking dog right here, kind of a shepherd. Um, and with an image like this, if you have, you know, an area, obviously that would take a lot longer if I was going to cut that out with my, with my, uh, let me save it, Control S. If I was going to try to cut that out with, like, you know, you zoomed all the way in trying to cut around all those hairs, that would be kind of a nightmare. So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a different version. I'm going to duplicate it, Control D. And since my duplicate's placed at zero, it pops it right on top. And then I'm going to go bitmap. I'm going to go mode. I'm going to go grayscale. And then I'm going to go effects, adjust, let's go tone curve here. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go pretty dark. And then I'll bring the white point over. So I'm watching, what I want to watch is, see these edges? I don't want to trim out those edges if I can avoid it. So if I go right to there, then I know i got to bring the black point over almost solid here, like that. And I'll say OK. And then I'll convert it to a bitmap again. Just leave it as a grayscale. And I convert it again because now I can uh, I can hit it with the tone curve again. And it's a little easier because the tone curve will be reset. So now the tone curve is starting from 0. And I can hit it one more time with the same kind of tone curve. I'll say OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to trace this bitmap outline. I'll go detailed logo. I may have to reduce it a little bit if it's 300 dpi. It'll want to go a little, little um, less as far as complexity. I'll change my colors just to save time. You don't have to wait till this whole thing refreshes. Um, you just got to wait for your dialogues to come up. And then I'll make it black and white. That'll save some time because that's all I want. I'm going to go back to settings. I'm going to grab my detail. I'm going to go all the way up because I want as much detail as I can. I'll leave smoothing alone and I'll just say OK. And let's see what it did. It gave me a group of 500 some objects. Let's ungroup it. Let me get rid of this background. And then let's see what this shape looks like if I change the color to black. It looks not too bad. I'm going to break it apart. Control K. And then I'm going to click in the middle and then delete and see, see all these objects. So there's a bunch of objects in there that I don't need. So I get rid of those. Let's go ahead and grab them. Just go all the way down, grab them all, and then I click here and then I hit delete. And so now I've got this basic shape, but I, there's a couple of little clips in here that I don't like. You see how that comes in? So I kind of zoom in and you can just do a little quick surgery here and just add a piece. See, as long as it becomes that, and then click here real quick with the shift key, and then merge them. And then come back out. Look down. Yeah, see how it kind of overlaps everything? That's not too bad. Now, what we're going to try to do now is click this background, just to make sure it's the right background. You can kind of look down here, RGB, Yeah, because you know I converted that other one to... Uh, to grayscale. You can also shift page up just real quick and then shift page down just to make sure it's the right one. Then object, power cut place and tag frame, and then you pop that in there. So that's a pretty quick way of getting a complex outline. Now you probably have some what they would call graying or different things over here and I can show you how kind of how to deal with that. And that'll be the next piece that we're going to do. So we're going to kind of make a design out of this. But what I want to do first is I want to kind of see if there's any background on this that I don't want. I'm going to go ahead and fill it with uh, black. I am actually want an RGB black when I fill it, so I'm going to double click here. 
I'm going to go ahead and go color palette. Let's go RGB. That way this can be black. That'll be a little darker. Shift page down, hit the P key, and now you see how that, there's a white line on that side? You may want to move, and what you can do is, it's pretty simple to do. You just kind of reference, okay, what needs to be adjusted? Now, if this wasn't such a complex line, I might even contour it. But with this being such a complex line, it's liable to get a little wonky if I contour it. And you see how many nodes there are? Um, so I can kind of, what I can kind of do is I can kind of just grab this whole side and I can kind of nudge it over and nudge it down. And then you click off and you kind of see, okay, now they give me a clean edge. Same thing up here. I can just kind of nudge those in. This is one way of kind of cleaning up your, and just a couple of nudges, not a lot. And these over here, sometimes it'll work. It depends on the photo, obviously. You know, sometimes you can move stuff and sometimes you can't. In this case, I'll nudge it in a little bit and see if that cleans up. Cleans up a little bit. There's probably a little bit here I could still do, but for the purpose of this, I'm just going to leave it. And then this over here, I can just grab this whole kind of side right there and just go in. Not too much because I don't want them to look weird. And you can see how there's a line there. And again, you could just, you know, just grab the area that's a problem. And I think that on this specific photo it works. On some other photos it might not work as good. You kind of see, okay, that's cleaned up a little bit. There's probably a couple more. Without getting too nitpicky, we can just nudge them over a little bit. And then here, just grab these, just to clean it up a little bit more. And then I think there's, on the other ear, there was a little bit, yeah, see? So you can just kind of grab this here, and then you just take these, over. And the same thing up there. You can just kind of grab this half and just go down a couple and then over a couple. And then go ahead and save it. Save your file. It may take a little while because these photographs and bitmaps are, you know, um, fairly big. Okay, so now we can take a look here. Let me zoom out. Looks pretty good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to finish this design. So I'm going to save it and then I'm going to import. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out. Um, let's go ahead and import. Uh, this is another piece I got from um, I got from FreePick. Just kind of a little thing here. Has a little background to it. It's kind of a background object, but it'll be good for for what our purposes are going to be. And I'm going to move I'm going to move him off, and you notice he's now he's free floating here. Um, let's go ahead and put this on there, here, and then we're going to get rid of the inside. So I'm going to hold the control key down and go ahead and delete these pieces on the inside, and then I'm just going to, I'm going to pop the doggy in there. So I'm going to go ahead and group this. Group. I'll go ahead and click that and hit the P key there. I'm going to take this guy and go ahead and see how he fits in there. He needs to be up a little higher. Maybe I need to shrink him a little bit. There we go. A um, little bit more. Somewhere around there. It's probably good. Okay. Now you'll notice, like, well, I've only got. Obviously, he can't stay behind there, right? So, but if I pull him in front, he'll be showing down here. So what do we do? Well, I can duplicate this, Control D. I can put him above, page up. But then I'm just gonna kinda cut this just a little bit, like right here. And what I'll do is I'll just go click, double click, just below the tongue here. And I'll go below, just like that. Then I'm going to use this, click here, and I'm just going to trim it. And then you can see how that part just stands up. And then if you see a little line, sometimes you'll see a little line, so that's why it's important. You just take a look. You can kind of see where the line is. I'm not sure what this is. Let me go to wireframe just to make sure there's something weird is in here. Oh, there's a little, looks like there's a little clip in here or something. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Let me see what it is. Oh, just a little weird thing up there. That's gone. Let me save it. Um, 
and we'll go ahead and finish this up. All we have to do is uh, pop two things in. Let me get rid of this piece, whatever that is. Yeah, I can delete that. Alt V E, go back, and then here's our here's our dog, and we want to give a little bit of realism here, um, just so so what I can do is I can show you that. I'm going to Control D. I'm going to duplicate it again. Then I'm going to right click. I'm going to say Extract Contents. I'm going to delete it, and then that leaves me with this frame here. And I'm going to right click, and I'm going to say Frame Type, Remove Frame. That takes the X off of it. Whoops. I moved it, and I Control Z to go back. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the bottom off a little bit because I don't want my effect that I'm going to do to show. And then I'm going to hit Shape, and I'll trim it. And then I'm going to click here and hit Delete. And then this, and now this, I'm going to use the drop shadow tool here. I'm just going to draw from the center out, and it creates a little bit of a drop shadow. I want to go a little heavier with it, like 75. You can see how it's creating a little bit more drop. If it doesn't look like enough, you can always hit the outside key and then actually shrink your size a little bit. Let me hit enter. There, and then that kind of gives you a little bit more. And then we'll do with this. Let's go ahead and fill it with uh, black. And then this can just go page down and then sh control page up, hit a couple. And then that gives me this drop shadow. So he looks like he's sitting on, he's above it. And then the last step is just to put a little lettering in here. Let's just do a little quick lettering here. Let's go K9, K9 Patrol. Let's find a font that'll work. Let's use this. Go here. Bring it down a little bit. Let's fill it with black. And then let's arc it just a little bit to match. And we're done. Let me make go single arc mode. Hold the control key, arc it up a little bit. Let me just squeeze it down so it matches this. And then I'll hold the shift key, squeeze it out a little bit. And bump it up twice. And then we can always put an edge to it too. I'm going to hit Control Q to turn it into curves. Control D. I'm going to nudge it down twice, down over twice. Put a little effect on it. Shift page down. And that gives it a little edge there. And then Control Duplicate. Go up twice, over twice. Let me shift page up just to see. Yeah. Over, over. Now let's go with a highlight yellow. And then shift page down. That kind of puts a highlight on it. There. And now the, our design is done here that we're going to put on our shirt that we originally created. I'm going to grab it all. So I'll select all. Hold the shift key, deselect. Control G is group. Um, we're going to save it. Control S. And then we'll copy it and we'll go back to where our shirt is right here. And then I'll paste it. Control V. And then we'll bring this design in on our shirt. Bring it in here. And the nice thing is, again, because it's cut out, you can kind of see it just fits right in there. So easy way to uh, create a design that's uh, knocking the background out of photos. You can zoom in here. And you can see and put it on a real shirt background and do it really quickly. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Some different ways of using CorelDRAW to uh, knock out backgrounds and photos. And again, subscribe if you like this video and check out my website.